How often do you conduct a voice search on your smartphone? Voice search is now one of the most popular ways to get information quickly. One in two smartphone users now use voice technology on a daily basis. And 72% of people who own a voice activated speaker say their devices are often used as part of their daily routine. Why is voice search growing so quickly? Well, there's a lot driving this trend. For one, people want to get quick answers without having to type. Voice search is perfect for on-the-go mobile users and mobile use in general is up. As an online business, you should be optimizing your voice search SEO. This video will discuss how you can do it. Most people use Google, Siri, or Alexa. Bing was Siri's source for results until Apple switched Siri to Google Search in 2017. By optimizing for Google Voice, you'll be optimized for Siri as well. Amazon and Google are fierce competitors, and this is likely why Alexa uses Bing results instead. Though Alexa is a player on the voice search field, you're better off optimizing for Google. Search habits for voice queries are different from type queries. Searching with voice changes how, when, and what people search for. The way we speak to digital assistants creates new voice search keywords that are more conversational than type keywords. This matters for voice search optimization because it affects what keywords you use and the on-page optimization you do with them. You might normally type pumpkin pie recipe, but with a voice search query, you'd be more likely to say, how do I make pumpkin pie? This is all part of Google's Hummingbird update. With Hummingbird, Google became an answer engine. Now you can get tons of relevant search results right in Google without having to click on an actual website. Hummingbird emphasized semantic search, conversational keywords, and implied query meaning, the intent behind those search terms. The way Hummingbird matches context and intent to the needs of the user is the foundation for voice search. Ultimately, Google wants to know the user intent behind searches, but it's hard for machines to recognize them sometimes. They divide intent into four main categories, informational, navigational, actional, and transactional. Or, I want to know, go, do, or buy. To demonstrate how all this works, you might do a search like, who is Ric Flair? Now, if I ask a follow-up question, where is he from? Google will understand the implied meaning of he as Ric Flair. Because of my first search, Google knows who I'm talking about. Each question is relevant to the one before it rather than each search being treated as a blank slate. This makes it a more conversational and intuitive experience. And it's why semantic search is central to a voice search. People use voice search all the time, at home, in the office, and on the go. This is mainly taking place on mobile devices, which makes sense as most people are most likely to use voice search on their mobile devices while driving. The on-the-go usage of voice search is reflected by how blank near me now searches are up 150%. Google uses their geolocation data to provide an answer to a blank near me search. The same search with Siri will yield different results from Apple's Maps app, which uses data from multiple companies, including Yelp and Foursquare. While Siri and Google use different geographic databases, when it comes to regular search results, they both use Google. The bottom line here is that people use voice search when they want a quick answer. This is why content that's optimized for voice search needs to give people direct answers to their specific questions. When it comes to voice search, people aren't necessarily looking for instructions on complex tasks. Rather, they are usually looking for micro data. So how do you optimize your SEO and content for voice search? Well, here's a couple things. Number one, find voice search keywords. Voice search keywords are different from the normal search terms you might look for. The normal keyword length is getting longer and voice search keywords are naturally long due to the way we speak. The keywords you should prioritize targeting are natural language keywords. These natural language keywords are longer search terms that may be around five words or longer. They're usually questions. For example, you might type natural language keywords definition, but you would actually say, what are natural language keywords? Even question keywords might be different for voice. You might type how to do link building, while a voice search might be how do I build more links to my website? 
You can find these keywords in any keyword research tool out there, and there's a bunch of them. Google will even show them to you as suggested searches when you type in the search box. You can use third-party tools like answerthepublic.com or Uber suggests to mine for question keywords that people are actually saying. It's also a good idea to mine call center, live chat, or email data. Item number two, optimize content for voice search. Once you've found your voice search keywords, you can start optimizing your content around them. The other advantage is that by optimizing your voice search, you're structuring your content a lot better in terms of what Google likes to see. Here's how to do it. Start by picking a topic. Then build content that answers commonly asked questions around your brand, services, or products. This includes content that answers who, what, where, when, and why questions. Picking topics this way makes it easy to include all those voice keywords you found. Your focus for voice search optimization should center around embedding those keywords into your content. Optimize your pages as you normally would and include as many queries that sound like voice terms on them. Next, embed long tail keywords into your content as answers to the questions being asked. A general guideline for the answers you provide is to keep them at around 30 words or less. Statistically, you can increase the odds of your answer being used by keeping it around 30 words. However, it's worth testing your questions on Google to see what length a competing results answer is and aiming for that length yourself. Make sure to optimize your long form content for voice. When creating long form content, embed as many answers as you can into it. Longer pages with more long tail keywords on them might have a better chance to rank. Why? Well, longer content simply plays the numbers game of having more keywords on the page. Just work them naturally into your writing. Don't make them seem stuffed with awkward sounding phrases. And optimize short form content for voice search as well. You can also make shorter content that is highly targeted toward voice search keywords. Try the technique of making voice search based FAQ pages. Structure the content as a series of question keywords and include more non-question long tail keywords in the answers. As mentioned already, voice searches tend to sound more natural and less robotic than keyboard inputted search queries. Write your content the same way. The possibilities for capturing local customers with voice search optimization are very exciting. Look at how the information provided on the Hoth's website and our Google My Business page appears for different queries. It's important to not only optimize your website's content to those queries, but to also claim and optimize your Google My Business profile. Your GMB listing also helps to ensure that the correct name, address, and phone number for your business is accurate when it shows up as a result. Additionally, it's important to use GMB's feature of choosing the category of what your business is. You can see how important this is for voice search. When you tag your GMB profile as a hair salon, it's that much more likely to appear as a result when someone searches for a hair salon near me. Work to get your brand in the knowledge graph. The more data Google has about you and your site, the better your chances will be to appear on the knowledge graph panel. Using structured markup in your content helps with this. You can also fill out social media profiles and associate them with your brand to provide even stronger signals to Google. If you can, get a Wikipedia page. Wikipedia results often appear for voice queries seeking general knowledge. Aim for a ninth grade reading level or below. Clear writing is a good guideline in general. Brian Dean's study found that content written at a ninth grade reading level or below tends to appear more often as a voice result. Focus on increasing your domain authority. Sites with lots of links pointing to them tend to rank more often in regular search. You would expect it to be the same for your voice, and it is. Brian Dean's study and our own tests found that sites with lots of links indeed rank more often in voice search. Page authority, on the other hand, is not as important for voice search as domain authority. Domain rating and URL rating are Ahrefs equivalent of Moz's domain authority and page authority. Remember, Google wants to provide results from authority sites. Build up your domain authority so that Google uses your site. Do you have videos to rank in search results? Video seems to be a big part of Google's strategy for answering voice queries. They tend to show up more for natural language keywords. When I do a standard search for pineapple cut, Google knows that I want to know how to cut a pineapple. They put the videos as the third featured result after the text snippet and the related questions people also ask. 
When I use a natural language keyword, how do I cut a pineapple, I get the video snippet at the top. Snippets like this one even automatically start at a relevant part of the video that answers my specific query. Google will sometimes show text from the video's description box rather than the video itself in the snippet. Rank your videos by optimizing titles and writing detailed video descriptions that use long tail and natural language voice search keywords. How fast does your site load? Google announced in July 2018 that their speed update was rolling out for all users. Now that PageSpeed is a ranking factor for mobile searches, you should absolutely improve this factor for your own site. The average voice search result page loaded in about half the time, 4.6 seconds of the average page. Site speed is definitely important to capture the featured snippet spot. Is your website mobile friendly? This is a huge factor for ranking your site now that Google has released their mobile first indexing. Since people tend to do voice searches on mobile phones more than other devices, your chances to land in a featured snippet goes way down without a mobile friendly website. Since people tend to do voice searches on mobile phones more than other devices, your chances to land in the featured snippets goes way down without a mobile friendly website. Google has a mobile friendliness test that you can use to see whether you need to optimize for mobile. We've covered a lot of ground in this video about voice search SEO. It's important to note that it's not separate from regular SEO. In fact, voice search is now the new standard for best optimization practices. Voice search is a huge trend that will only keep growing as more people use devices to seek out information. Check out more of the Hoff's Learning Hub for additional resources on SEO, keywords, and link building. The Hoff can help you shift your current SEO strategy to begin addressing voice search SEO. Simply book a free strategy session with us by clicking the link below.